Hey folks, Josephine Sabora here. It's been a while since I've done my last video, which was a tribute to uh, the late great YouTuber Emerson Prebros or Ember Prebros, Helsing920. Such a shame because he really was a great YouTuber. Yeah, passed away last week. Can't get over that, but um, I'm moving on. Been also busy that week. Um, just signed up for a new fall semester for college. I'm actually going to take a new course. I think it's going to be astronomy that I'm going to take because I didn't do very well a long time ago, so I hope this one will turn out for the best for me. So that's going to be my new class. I'll still take some PE, the cycling class. And I've been buying some more movies at Big Lots. I've been watching some movies too, just to keep up. Because pretty soon, <laughs> I'm going to have my last uh, final weeks of summer vacation. So it's such a shame. It's just happening so fast. Well, anyway, I finally saw the movie just recently, which is the latest film of the Alien franchise called Alien Covenants, which is basically a sequel to Prometheus which is the prequel to Alien itself it definitely reminded me of Alien when I first saw it and I did review that film five years ago and I remember liking the film I gave it three stars and I enjoyed it mostly because of of the idea uh, I like the characters that we had well some of the characters I mean there were not so great characters in the movie, but there are ones I can deal with. Uh, I like the main character, Elizabeth Shaw, which was played by uh, Nomi Redpace from the movie The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the original. Uh, David, that was played by Michael Fassbender. There was also um, Aris Elba. Along with Charlie's Farron, and as much as I, I love the first two Alien films, yeah, the one that really Scott directed, Alien, and and of course uh, James Cameron directing Aliens, and then we also had uh, <laughs> Alien Free, which David Fincher directed, which happens to be the worst of the bunch. It was the most disappointing movie ever. Then there was Alien vs. Predator. Yeah, which is Alien, the Xenomorph uh, versus the, the alien creature. Yeah, Predator. Yeah, teaming up to, to kill each other. Yeah, just like the video game and the comics and all that. Then there was the sequel, which, which was really bad. Um, as for Predator, of course, we we had the awesome original that I really love uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which had the sequel that instead of being set in the jungle, it was set in Los Angeles, had Danny Glover in it. And then uh, there was the Robert Rodriguez produced one called Predators, oh, once again set in the jungle, but with new characters. Anyway, um, it got mixed reviews when it came out. Um, it's already becoming a big hit at the box office. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes um, surprisingly gave this movie a pass, like 71%, certified fresh. Critics actually enjoy the movie. Well, the audience themselves, however, were completely disappointed. Yeah, they really were. 
And sad to say, I'm in the minority on this one. Because I didn't like the movie at all. It almost makes Alien Free look like a masterpiece. So, if Alien gets fucked up, then so is Prometheus. Anyway, the movie stars uh, Michael Fassbender, Kathleen Waterston from the movie Fantastic Beasts and How to Live with Them, Billy Crudup you know, from the movie from the movie Watchmen, he was also in the movie Big Fish, and other films that he's been in. Even did some voice acting in the movie Princess Mononoke. You have the English dub version from Miramax. Danny McBride from Pineapple Express and Tropic Thunder. Damien Buncher. Carmen Ijoko. Amy Semes. Holly Hernandez and Jesse Smollett with cameo appearances by Guy Pierce, Nomi Rapace, and James Franco. It's written by John Logan and Dante Harper and it's directed by Ridley Scott. The movie begins when we meet a corporate founder of the Whalen Corporation named Peter Whalen, who's played by Guy Pierce, who decided to speak with his newly designed android, which he named himself David, out of a replica of the statue of David that was created by Michelangelo, and he's played by Michael Fassbender, which is the same character as we saw in the movie Prometheus. Whalen explained to David that sooner or later there's going to be a search for mankind's creator together. But ten years have passed and we soon discovered a colony ship known as Covenant, which is being sent to a remote planet called the Orgy 6, which has 2,000 colonists and thousands of human embryos uh, aborted on the ship which is being monitored by another android named Walter also played by Michael Fassbender. All of a sudden a stellar uh, neutrino had burst and damaged the ship which suddenly killed several of the colonists and even worse it even killed the ship's captain named Jake Branson who was played by James Franco in a small cameo room. As he dies um, inside the pod and actually burns himself while he's asleep. We then learn that it's actually uh, the widower of Janet Danny Daniels, the chief of terraforming of the Covenant mission, is played by Catherine Waterston. Now they have a new captain named Chris Oram, who's played by Billy Crudup, who's not only uh, their first mate of the Covenant, not to mention Karen's husband, <clears throat> he's also a self-serious man who believes in faith. So anyway, he had to take over, along with the crew, which had also Karen, uh, Maggie, uh, Upward, Wick, and Tennessee T. Ferris. And Tennessee T. Ferris, of course, is the pilot that's played by Danny McBride. So, um, they came to investigate to see what's going on. So they hired uh, T. to actually uh, fix the ship, getting a repair, only to find out that there's a signal that's affecting the, his communication uh, all over his helmet. And... So something was going completely wrong. So, so the crew had decided to use the transmission signal to see what's going on. That's it might have been taking place from the planet, and that's where we get to hear a song by uh, John Denver. So they wind up in the planet, which leads to a crash alien ship, 
And while on the surface they brought in the security teams, Ledward and Haylitz, you know, diverted from the main group of, of the crew, which also brought in uh, Janet and Chris, you know, Walter joining in. <clears throat> unfortunately, unfortunately, Ledward and Hellard had been uh, infected by the alien spores that they accidentally touched. They also, uh, while Daniels and the members of the main group had cultivated common wheat, so they also uh, also has like wildlife and animal sounds uh, that they heard around. So then Karen suddenly helps uh, Led back to the ship and into the lab, which that's where they got infected. <clears throat> yeah, it led to some stupid scenes. I'm going to get to that. Um, well, half of the crew just went inside uh, a tomb, and that's when we discovered um, David, which they actually found them just as we started getting all, all the two um, baby xenomorphs that came out of their bodies. Yeah, both late, late word and Halet. Yeah. So they were being attacked by them, and then, you know, David had shot one, and they decided to go in to discover what's happening. We then learned that David uh, not only is the brother of Walter, but we also found out that he actually has been collecting all this um, creatures that he had uh, that's inside the tomb especially the ones that he collected and then he also starts creating yeah all of this stuff that's happening and and Walter lost his arm you know, during the, the attack so there was a scene where both uh, Walter and and David were actually uh, practicing on playing the flute and all of that that went inside Then, of course, um, he brought in Chris Oren to, to check out those uh, alien eggs on the side, and, and that's where we get to see those face huggers. Yeah, it was the face hugger went on him, and it just attacked him completely until what happens to him at the end. Yeah, most of the crews were, were getting killed completely. We also began to learn what happened to Elizabeth Shaw. Yeah. Which that leads to that. And then all the stuff that's happening. And then we begin to find out that that David is the villain in this movie. And he's gone completely mad and he starts to attack Walter and, and all the rest. Yeah, at least that fight scene that happened. And <laughs> it goes on and on and on until they finally uh, escape. They try to get back you know, with the help of just as Tennessee uh, had uh, brought in the ship ready for them to board and and one of the Xenomorphs jump on top of it and and they're trying to stop it. Yeah, but Daniel's actually trying to uh, to actually shoot it on top, and it had Tennessee actually trying to pro torch it. Everything. It only gets worse <laughs> when we get to see another xenomorph joining in inside the ship. We, so we begin to find out what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so that means that now we get to see uh, Daniels and, and T actually teaming up to stop it. <sighs> I was really disappointed with this movie. I really am. It just seems like um, they pretty much fucked up everything that happened in this movie. I know some people like this film. I understand. 
Um, I respect people's opinions on it. But for those who hate this movie, I had to agree. Because... I'm going to be honest with you, there were so many stupid people in this movie. With the exception of uh, Daniels and T, and I guess I could throw in Walter, you know, at least he's, he's more uh, calmer and more respected compared to the rest of the crew. Until there's actually a twist in the movie, I'm not going to give that away. But I thought it was stupid these days that they had to go for lousy characters that obviously are, are weaker than the others. And the fact that they're going around doing something incredibly stupid. They should have known better because they didn't get any protective shields whatsoever. That, that really is a shame. I mean... I can't believe, you know, they, they can't develop their safety when it comes to this. I mean, yes, they did brought in their machine guns and all of that, but they should have brought in their safety. They should have worn their helmets so they find out what's happening in the planet. But yet it's like, great, you know, they know they're going to get affected by one of those spores that they had. Yeah, I mean, because there was a spore that actually went on their ear canal and their noses and it gets to the point where they got infected completely there's even a scene where by the time they took um, Lee Ward inside the lab of the ship his wife is basically hugging him even though he's already infected filled with blood that's that's coming out of his body and then the, uh, the xenomorph was starting to pop out and then the girl actually just uh, locked her inside with the, the creature just when she was about to get attacked by the, the baby xenomorph and then she even says let the fuck out yeah because she was about to go get the gun and so that way she can come back and shoot him you know if, if I were her I would just let her out of the lab and then try to get the machine gun and go back and just and just shoot the damn thing. Th that woman wasn't smart. I, I can't believe it. She, it's like she just let her get killed. Just by getting locked in inside the lab. It's, it's ridiculous. <sighs> I know, they, they, they should have known better. To, just to find out if, if this planet is... Uh, is not uh, polluted or anything like that because chances are there's going to be something wrong here but I don't know they thought that the planet was all clear like it's all clean and it's not dirty it's not polluted or anything like that they should have known better so they just had to go without without the protective shields it's just ridiculous I don't know, it's just every character in this movie just seems rather weaker than the other. Especially the the captain named Chris Oram, who's played, of course, Billy Crudo. Yeah, even he was weak in this movie. He, he didn't do anything much for me. And that's a shame. I mean, I, I can understand him being afraid of him, but he just comes across as just being the weakest captain we ever had. You know, if... If... if um, if Jake Branson didn't die, I think he would have been a better captain than Chris Oren was. Or at this rate, uh, or better yet, just have Daniels. I mean, Daniels is a better captain. I just don't get it. I mean, why do they have to make them so weak? But I already knew I was in trouble when they did kill them off, too. Speaking of which. I mean, I knew the, the moment that it was going to happen when they killed off uh, Jake Branson. Yeah, it, it almost seemed like, uh, J it always seems like James Franco was just there for a paycheck. And that's really a shame because he's a good actor. I think he, he could have been more, 
he could have been in this movie more than just being killed off at the beginning. So that, that's just ridiculous. But I would say the only good thing about the movie was um, was Catherine Waterston as uh, as Daniels. Yeah, Janet Danny Daniels. Along with Danny McBride as Tennessee T. Ferris. And uh, Michael Fassbender as Walter. And David, even though David has been... <sighs> that is until we learn about uh, David's uh, past and then all this other crap that's happening. And I know he's trying to be more like... Like Peter O'Toole right there doing all these oppressions or, or any other kind. Um, as for the xenomorphs, they weren't done very well when it comes to the CGI effects they used. I mean, some of them were okay, but then other ones they weren't. Some of the movements just look kind of ridiculous at times. It just didn't seem right the way they did it. And I know the face hugger scene. I, I remember the face hugger from Alien Resurrection. And I, I remember how I remember how that one went into it. But this one was just ridiculous. God, it's just that people were pretty dumb in this movie. Incredibly dumb. Amazingly enough, there was supposed to be that one scary scene. It was supposed to be scary, where you actually get to see two couples uh, in the shower, and suddenly the xenomorph shows up and kills both of them. And it did, because that was in the trailer. <laughs> that that even seemed predictable too. I mean, the whole film seems predictable. Also, I know people are complaining about that people wish that they had practical effects in this movie. I wish they did, too. Um, there's nothing wrong with CGI, I, other than just being overrated. I understand that. But it's okay to actually have a mix of CGI with practical effects to make it even better, as long as it's done right for a change. But... It just didn't impress me as much. And at times like this, it wasn't really that scary. In fact, I wasn't even scared in this movie at all. I just saw the film completely just to see what happens. That's all I saw in the movie. So, other than that, though, I, I was disappointed. It just, it almost makes, uh, once again, Alien Free looking like a masterpiece. As bad as Alien Free was, <laughs> this is worse. I just can't believe uh, the writers of this movie. Yeah, John Logan wrote this. The same guy who wrote Bats and Hugo. That's definitely what I expected from this movie. And it's just a huge letdown, a complete disappointment. Not to mention the story was very boring, uninteresting. Filled with dumb characters. Some good, some bad CGI on the xenomorphs. Mostly focusing on David the android. That's pretty much what they're focusing on. and It's not even scary at all. It's just... Uh, just ridiculous. Score wasn't interesting either. The writing was pretty bad. I don't know, man. It's just amazing how this movie gets a pass. But in the end, it just feels like another flat alien sequel that we didn't expect. It. In fact, I love Prometheus more than this. I really do. And I love the first two Alien films, they're way better. Because at least they have more action to them. It was exciting, scary, 
entertaining. You actually have cool characters that you can understand. This one just has none of that. And that's just sad. <laughs> it really is. Well, it was a waste of time. So, if you love the movie, fine by me. It's worth recommending, but if you love it. But for those who hated this movie, don't bother with it. It's just a waste of time. You'd be better off watching Alien and Aliens together. Also, you'd be better off watching Prometheus if you love the film. I know there are some people that don't like Prometheus. That's okay. I mean, maybe for some people who weren't interested in it. But if, if you ask me, I'm going to stick to the first two films. Prometheus, Alien vs. Predator if I had to. I mean, I'll, I'll take that over this movie any day. Same goes with the third movie and the the fourth movie, Alien Resurrection. I'd rather take those two, the first two films along with Alien vs. Predator and Prometheus over Alien Free, Alien Resurrection, and Alien Covenant right here. And also Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Um, I'm cool with the first two Predator movies, and I didn't mind Predators, even though it has its issues, but that's okay. Because this movie's even worse. And it really sucks, too, that we begin to find out what happened to Nomi Rat Pace's character. Elizabeth Shaw, and they, they really fucked this up. They killed her off, and we already knew all the crew has been killed off, and <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I also began to learn that, um, that there was also a voice communicator named Mutter in the, the Covenant ship, almost a resemblance to the film Alien. And they even say that uh, it's a connection to um, Ellen Ripley for for Janet Danny Daniels. Um, I don't know. It's just a waste of time. Um, I'm sorry. I tried my best. I just didn't. I just didn't want to be disappointed. But sadly, <laughs> I really am. So I'm sorry. Well, anyway, that's Alien Covenant, and I give this movie one and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.